ਗਲੋਬਲ ਸਿੱਖ ਅਚੀਵਰਸ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਹਰ ਹਫਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਨਵੀਂ ਸ਼ਖਸੀਅਤ ਨਾਲ ਆਪਣੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਰੂਬਰੂ ਕਰਾਨੇ ਆ ਅੱਜ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਨੇ ਯੂਕੇ ਤੋਂ ਸਰਦਾਰ ਇੰਦਰਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੀਆ ਆਖਨੇ ਆ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਮੈਂ ਸਰਦਾਰ ਹਜਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਕਰਾਂਗਾ ਕਿ ਅੱਜ ਉਹ ਸਰਦਾਰ ਇੰਦਰਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਨਾਲ ਕਰਨਗੇ ਸਾਜ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਸਰਦਾਰ ਹਜਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ okay i feel honored to introduce the lord singh of wimbledon cbe member of the house of lords a life peer and lord temporal in the show global sikh achievers to our viewers of sikhi channel i welcome I sada thank, thank you very much it's very, uh, my um, privilege to be talking to the sikhi channel uh, about life in england um, going back many years and what i've tried to achieve in this country yeah so uh, sadar sahab we will uh, wish to have some interaction with you and in the beginning uh we will like to know please share something about your early life memories with us please yeah i i think i need to share with you first of all how i came to england i was oh. less, less than 1 year old when my parents came they came via east africa where my father who had been busy and uh, active in the independence movement was more or less expelled to east africa and then from there he came to the uk and the earliest memories are all of uh, lots of discrimination he faced so much discrimination as a doctor he couldn't get a job um, he instead of in a hospital so he put a board outside his house and said um, that this is a doctor's uh, surgery and slowly patients began to come and uh, it was so difficult in the early days that my mother had to pawn her jewelry to make ends meet oh so challenging things very challenging and then from there challenging in the schools and so on um hmm. one of the earliest memories we used to be bullied all the time at school and one of the earliest memories was that at one time a much older boy was teasing me and uh, trying to um, ridicule me and teasing me i got very angry and hit him as hard as i could with my left hand and mm-hmm. to my astonishment he fell to the ground oh. and it was only then i realized that i had a strong left hand and later on four sing brothers were more than half the school boxing team okay <laughs> so great challenges you have faced over there in that country yeah. uh, but what was the purpose of your migration to the uk then the, the migration to the uk was that when my father went to east africa he'd been taking part in the gurukha bag uh, movement and um, the british were very unhappy and angry with him they wouldn't let him practice anywhere he went for to kashmir for a while but they harassed him there so he managed his friends managed to put him on a ship to east africa to kenya and um, there he continued to um, talk about freedom and the british authorities there who were quite friendly said what do we do with you and he said send me to england let me go to england and i'll get british qualifications as well as indian so that's how we ended up there okay so your initial qualifications be, uh, beginning qualifications were at uk then it means yeah oh yes everything oh okay. yeah. everything okay. from school to university to everything okay okay uh, you from engineer to journalist and a politician who did this career path of yours take its course 
just by accident that I wanted to be an engineer. I studied mining engineering very hard, very, very hard, qualified. And then when I went to an interview for mine manager, uh, they said, you can't be a, an Indian can't be a mine manager in this country. So I said, okay. <laughs> so then I went, I went to India for some short, uh, for two or three years. I got married there as well. And um, the same discrimination chased me in India because the mine was in Bengal and the Bengali assistant managers would talk about amongst themselves in English, but when they saw me, it was Bangla, and there's no end of discrimination there. <coughs> so back to England, <laughs> and then into mining for a while, and then civil engineering. Bangla people are very particular about their language, so they don't uh, accept the outsiders. Okay? No, they do not. They do but now this now the situations have changed. Now everything has become cosmopolitan everywhere. You say, I, I think so. Different, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in this country, the sort of discrimination um, we face as children that doesn't exist. It's more subtle, and they make sure you don't get the right job and things like that. But not the face-to-face -face discrimination. There's one time at school that the teacher looked at me and with the whole class watching and said, they come over into this country. This was before independence. They come over mm -hmm. to this country, get educated, and then go back to try and throw us out. Straight mm -hmm. as a small child. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the journey, then engineer, then journalist, how it all happened? You, yeah, you yeah. said job student. Journalist was interesting because when I went to India for a short time in the 60s, there was the Punjabi Subha movement. And yeah. my younger brother and I were from England. We were watching this. What's going on? Why are they making life so difficult for sex? Then yeah. I, I had this plan. And uh, yeah. I said, if I write the newspapers with a sick name, they won't take any notice. So I chose a pen name, that of my next door neighbor, Mr. Pendry, and wrote to the Hindustan Times um, complaining about the treatment of Sikhs. I said it bodes ill for the future of democracy that Sikhs should be treated in this way. And the letter was published. And then uh, I wrote also to the uh, other uh, Times of India and other newspapers. They were publishing everything if it came from an Englishman. Then some people got very angry. They wrote against me, some Hindu people. And uh, I said, well, why stop there? And I wrote other supporting letters to myself, uh, supporting okay. myself from my old head teacher, from um, Muslims, from other people, all pen names. And um, everyone was amazed. Who's this English person, Pendry? writing so much in favor. And I was taken by my father, who is prominent Sikh, Dr. Dewan Singh, in India. I was taken mm -hmm. by him to Gudwara Sisganj. And they said, okay. you, and he said, you want to know who this Mr. Pendry is? Here's Mr. Mm -hmm. Pendry. And they were mm -hmm. very, really delighted. They were very nice to me. That so was that, your disguised? <laughs> yes, that was my introduction into journalism. When I came back to this country, I started writing um, articles about Sikhism because there was no, there was total ignorance. At one time in the newspaper, it was the Daily Telegraph, there's a crossword puzzle clue. Um, the clue was Punjabi Hindu, four letters. Next day, the answer was Sikh. Hmm. And I said, no, that's wrong to the uh, editors. And they said, um, no, that's what's written in the dictionary. And okay. so I thought I'd better start writing, saying something, because no one else is. And um, mm. it, it, it all came from there. Then uh, mm. I was invited to write to newspapers, invited to speak on the radio, and I've been doing it ever since. Mm. That that special happening 
prompted you to write there yes. also. And, yes. And the, we, were, we were outraged. What is this nonsense? This this mm. is uh, discrimination. We don't like it. And we, so we Correct. started writing. Discrimination. And then a journey from a journalist to a politician. Normally, journalists uh, tend to become politicians. So how your journey was there? No, and I, I've never been a politician. I've been criticizing um, the um, the whole idea of um, politics and... when you say that uh, our group is right and this group is wrong. My central focus for writing was about the teachings of Sikhism. And it was, it is, they were so well appreciated that um, they helped me in my writing and broadcasting career. People like um, and the, the, these different prime ministers, they would seek my advice and uh, invite me to their 10 Downing Street, 11 Downing Street, uh, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown and, and uh, 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 David Cameron. Uh, they've all, I've been met with them all, and they would invite me. In fact, what happened when 9-11, when the terrorist bombs took place, faith leaders from different communities were invited to 10 Downing Street to pledge support for the government. Everyone said, this is a terrible disaster. We cannot, um, we are totally against what happened. Afterwards, yeah, yeah. the Muslim... Uh, representative came out, he said, turned to us and said that uh, this was coming to them, they, they deserved it. So the people speak with different voices. I've always well, tried to speak with just one voice that is from a Sikh perspective. And after broadcasting so many years, I went to give a lecture in Estonia, near Russia, and I was introduced by the British ambassador as the man who brought Guru Nanak to the breakfast tables of Britain. So that, that is, um, uh, I knew I'd got somewhere when I, that was said. Great. So uh, uh, as you uh, uh, introduce uh, Guru Nanak uh, to them means yes. uh, you became an ambassador of Guru Nanak over there. Absolutely, and I hope I still am, because although politics take you in different directions, I, I won't do anything that goes against Sikh teachings. And believe me, I'm widely respected. If I get up to speak in the House of Lords, everyone listens. In fact, I don't know if people in India know, but there was a prominent British politician called Norman Tebbit. Now, he was in Mrs. Thatcher's government, and he was very right-wing, anti-immigrant, and uh, he used to be very critical of immigrants. Once, after um, speaking in the House of Lords, he, after I spoke in the House of Lords, he got up and said that if there's any sort of trouble anywhere, the safest place you could be in is with a group of Sikhs. So he had changed that much. And many others have changed. So uh, you being a member of House of Lords, how you are uh, participating these days in Corona period? It, it, it is a nightmare. We are having Zoom meetings with the House of Lords. We're having Zoom votes. Everything is going on in this um, hybrid way where a few people actually go to the Lords, but most of us come in from outside via the internet. So it is difficult. I found it very difficult to start with. It's much easier now, but um, it's not quite as good as face to face because right. in the Lords, if you stand up to speak, you can look at people in the eye. You can even make a slight joke but you can't do that properly on the internet. But but still, you feel connected at least. Oh yes. If through Zoom, if yes. through Zoom meeting you are participating, yes. that's that's still still is relief for you are connected. Yes. So, yes. 
so how uh, our viewers will uh, channel sikhi channel viewers will like to know how you got selected to this position in the house of lords uh, your contributions to the society uh, please uh, have some yeah. detail about that i can uh, explain a little that um, things like uh, the queen's awards like CB or B, I had those because of recognition of my work. And the more I did, I was recognized. And at one time, um, the Tony Blair wanted me to go into the House of Lords as a labor peer. He invited me and asked me, and I said no, because I don't want to be told uh, political points, do this, vote for that if it goes against my religious teachings, I won't do it. Then he was followed by Gordon Brown, who also called me and said, um, I think we need you in the House of Lords, and um, the, the, but I, will, I would like to see you as a cross-bencher, as an independent. And independent. As an independent. He lost the election and his recommendation went, but someone persuaded me to put in an application and uh, that application very long and complicated requiring lots of things was successful i was interviewed and that was interesting because in in the interview um, one of the people said to me that do you know that if you are selected you will be the first turban sikh in parliament and a, a sensible person, uh, a political person would have said, oh, that's a great honor. I really appreciate that. And no, not me. I said, mm -hmm. I don't want to be a token sick. And then afterwards, I thought, what, how silly can I be? But it didn't go against me. It probably helped me. They appreciated my honesty. And I was yeah. selected. So as a cross bencher. Uh, you can always hear the voice of cautious and express that uh, yeah. in the House of Lords. We yeah. feel so. We can and we do frequently. Um, the cross branches do a lot to make bad legislation better legislation. We do a lot in that way. I, in my own way, have initiated different debates, started them and uh, got a lot of support. For example, recently there's been a lot of concern over the uh, knife crime in Britain. Everyone's saying we'll have to ban all these knives. And with that, they wanted to ban the large kirpans. Now, the small kirpans are uh, exempt because it's a religious item. But what yeah. they were saying, you can't even keep a large kirpan in the house. Now, people like me have frequently presented siropas, uh, given the awards, and we have them in our houses. So I moved an amendment to things, and uh, all the different political parties agreed. And okay. in, in the same way, earlier, I started a debate in um, 2014 on the 30th anniversary of Blue Star. And uh, that carried a lot of weight. The government wouldn't agree to the independent inquiry, but most members were sympathetic. Okay. Then we finally uh, achieved the target, or uh, is it still uh, pending with the bill? The bill is pending? The, the, the uh, bill regarding the kirpan, the large kirpans, has been passed. We're allowed to keep them. As far as the inquiry goes, we still have to keep pushing. Oh. That's a great achievement. I feel the whole sick world uh, feels that it's a great achievement. So uh, our uh, viewers will love to know what were some of your experiences of the Second World War? Uh, you have written and... Yeah, yeah. very interesting experiences. We were in a very peculiar position because my father was making speeches against Britain even during the war. And uh, he was constantly surveillanced and looked at how can we arrest him. 
Um, fortunately, um, he, he was leading a very decent life as well. And um, the police couldn't catch him in any way. But it was difficult for us at school as well, because um, people were saying one thing, we would look at it in a different way. And then when we saw the pictures of the Holocaust in, on the newsreel, we realized that the Germans were bad and perhaps worse than Britain. But at the end of the war, when everyone put a flag outside their house, Union Jack, on to Eclair, we won the war. There's one house that had no flag outside. And uh, that was our house. And my father lost a lot of patients, uh, his, um, the patients that used to come to him. I went to a shop and nearby and someone said to me, how is it that you don't have a flag and um, you must be Germans? And I said, I replied humorously, ja, ja, the German, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And they all laughed and that was the end of it. Mm -hmm. so there, there are experiences like that. There were also experiences. We used to collect memorabilia, memorabilia about um, what we saw. I had quite a good collection of um, incendiary bomb casings and shrapnel from guns and other things. And we'd swap them and make a game out of it all. Children mm -hmm. take things much more naturally than grown up. We weren't worried about anything. This was life. Fortunately, our parents were also very good. They, they must have been worried, but they didn't let any fear come on to mm -hmm. us. Guru da Khalsa jeda hai, o apni galno express kari din da hai, apne protest nu, jithe bhi basta. Ek bada o Union Jack na lana kar de baar, ek badi badi to protest express karan da trika jeda si, you express that protest. That uh, I, somehow or other I've been a protester all my life. Apparently I'm told that when I, on my first day when I was taken to school at the age of five, that... Um, who my mother left me at the bottom of some steps. The school was on a hill and I was supposed to go up the, step, up the steps to the school. No, not me. I wanted to go a different way. There was a big pile of sand and uh, I started climbing up the sand. And when I got to the top, the teachers were so angry. They said, we'll expel you from school if you do that again. So I nearly got expelled from school on my first day. Oh. <laughs> But it, it seems that uh, protesting is there. These days, I am also protesting very much about what they call um, racial discrimination. They say it's whites discriminating against blacks. Now, it's not. I know it's not from my own psyche that we are imperfect human beings. We all have our prejudices. And education should take those prejudices away. Some people don't allow to keep their prejudices all the time. And, but we all have to work at it. It's not that just from one side to the other side, that Asians have their prejudices against blacks. This is there all the time. And as I mentioned, uh, as a mine manager in India, the Bengali people at the time were prejudiced mm -hmm. against Punjabis. So we have to learn, and Sikhism teaches us the main one thing, the most important lesson that the world needs to know, Manuski of Eki Pacharmo, recognize the oneness of all humanity, that all these differences are superficial differences of custom, dress, and so on. But underneath, we are all one human family. That is what I keep trying to stress. Mm -hmm. So we should congratulate you for keeping close to the heart the teachings of Guru Nanak, fighting against discrimination, caste and creed, everything. So this is your great achievement in life. So uh, uh, we will love to know what have your uh, been your experiences regarding racism in the UK and how is it getting better now? No, it, it is just changing because it has been there all through. I have experienced racism and my brothers have. 
my father has, we've experienced it. It was very direct because it was put to us in a way before independence that you are in, in, inferior, British uh, su superior. So that's how the position was. It, it was like that, direct. Afterwards, it became more subtle and uh, more difficult to eliminate. But it has lingered on. It's get, they may try and make some improvements, but it is still there. It is because people do not understand this fundamental um, teaching that we are all the same. We, these are superficial, silly differences, which we shouldn't um, build on and exaggerate and say those people are worse than us. You can't say that. There are good Sikhs, there are bad Sikhs. There are good Hindus, bad Hindus. It depends how we behave. But anyone who lives true to the teachings of Sikhism realizes yeah. that this is the direction we should all be going in, whether we're Sikhs or non-Sikhs. Yeah. Uh, we feel that Guru Granth Sahib, the message, just as Paul Buck, Nobel Prize winner, said, yeah. if Guru Nanak was born in Europe, the whole world could have been sick. So, Jedi, our Allah Noor Upaya Kudrat ke sab bande ek noor te sab jag upjaya koon pale ko mande. Agar asi Guru Granth Sahib da message Kabir ji da ditta ya. Agar asi word tak pucha sakiye to to adhe aliyo gal ke Jedi racism wali gal hai ya discrimination, caste and creed diye. Uno asi dur kar sakte ya. The, yeah. As an uh, Guru Nanak's ambassador, we feel that you are doing your duty, at least in UK. And every Sikh should follow this uh, guidelines of Guru Nanak. Uh, I, I think we have done a lot to spread the teaching of Sikhism and understanding. And it is appreciated by many Sikhs, many um, non-Sikhs. Um, okay. uh, Sikhs themselves should do a bit more to understand their own religion. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, we will be short of time. Uh, uh, you have got a number of awards and applauses. Uh, please share with our uh, viewers. Uh, way back in 1989, you got an award. Until this time, you have got a number of awards. Please share some of uh, uh, most important, which are close to your heart. Please. The most important award was when someone said, this is the man who brought Guru Nanak to the breakfast tables of Britain. I got an award, an OBE first, from, uh, presented by the Queen. Then I got um, the CBE, which is a higher award. And I've been a justice of the peace, m many things. But um, they all add up to, uh, I can't claim credit. The credit goes to Sikhism. I got the uh, Templeton Award a prize mm. for furthering the religious understanding. It's an international prize. And I've got other awards, so many uh, different degrees from universities. They're, they're all, they're nice, but the nice thing is to be recognized as a Sikh. And that, that is the biggest award. Great. Um, so, uh, we will like to know, you have had some fascinating experiences of life. Uh, what are a few words of wisdom you would like to give to our young generation? Uh, young generation, I have compiled a little sheet. The teachings, uh, on one side, there are the listed, all the different religions. At the top, there are the ethical teachings of religion. And I invite young Sikhs to compare, not just say, uh, take it for granted that Sikhism is the best and, or anything like that. Do your own research about what Sikhism teaches, what Christianity teaches, what uh, Islam and uh, Judaism all teach. And look, compare and value. I tell you why I say that, that there's a story of a, a painting uh, on a wall, which uh, in a house where people lived, and it would have been there for generations. And um, they were thinking of taking it away and selling it because they wanted something new. Then someone comes into the house, looks at it and says, 
that is a priceless Rembrandt, a value, it's infinite value. And then it's someone from outside looking in that uh, tells you the worth of what you are in your religion. It six themselves are too close. We don't see it. We, too, we just take it for granted. This is what Guru Nanak taught, this is why. But we don't compare, we don't realize the immense value because Sikhism is not just a religion of the past. It is a religion of the future. It is the only way to the future. So you invite uh, youth to uh, study comparative religion, yeah. rather. Yeah. Never Compar say to a young person, Punjabi Sikho, Sikho, and then everything will come. No. Learn. Do your own research. Compare. Yeah. That's a good initiative, and uh, uh, youth will be guided uh, by the scriptures, by the history, by the heritage, everything. Uh, they can be near the uh, spiritual thoughts, uh, yeah. which can be gained. Yeah, which can yeah. be gained from. So, there, how many religions teach full equality of all human beings? How many religions? teach that there are different ways to God. Most of uh, the Abrahamic religions say ours is the only way. That is a recipe for conflict between the different religions. Sikhism says no, there are different ways. There's different ways up the mountain to the summit. Choose your way, respect other ways. How many religions teach full gender equality? How many religions teach the need to stand up against injustice and particularly against religious intolerance. We are so mm. fortunate, but we don't understand how how fortunate we are. So Guru Sahib, the message we said is that all of us are doing a lot of work. Sarab Taram, I am Suresh Taram, Harko Naam, Jap Nirmat Taram. Good deeds and yeah. remembering the God yeah. that he is watching us all the time. That should be remembered by every individual, every soul. Exactly. That, a, that emancipation is there, there and there on. So yeah. it was very nice talking to you. Our viewers have enjoyed. We hope so. Pada Nanda Yaji, you have had good experiences. Unity, but um, I'm sorry about the light in, in this room coming through Venetian blinds. I cannot stop it. But you closed. We understand. We understand that is beyond your control. But okay. it was quite interesting and encouraging for our youth also. Thank you okay. so much. Uh, it's you. over to Sir Harjot Shah Singh Ji, head of the channel, Sikhi channel. Uh, he will convey that. My uh, ਅਨਵਾਦ ਹਰਜਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਕ ਗੱਲ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹਾਂਗਾ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੁਣੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਗੱਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਰੋਸ਼ਨੀ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਰੋਸ਼ਨੀ ਆ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੈਂ ਗੱਲ ਕਹਾਂਗਾ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਰੋਸ਼ਨੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰਲੇ ਜੀਵਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਈ ਹੋਈ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਅੱਜ ਰੋਸ਼ਨੀ ਬਾਹਰ ਵੀ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਆ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਇੱਕ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੁਝ ਵਿਊਅਰਸ ਹੈਗੇ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਸਵਾਲ ਹੋਰ ਪੁੱਛਿਆ ਹੈ ਸਵਾਲ ਨੇ ਪੁੱਛਿਆ ਕਿ ਐਫਰਟਸ ਜੋ ਆਪ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਕੀਤੇ ਗਏ ਅਫਗਾਨ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਰੀ ਰੀਲੋਕੇਟ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਉਹ ਕਹਿ ਰਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਰੋਸ਼ਨ ਜਾਵੇ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਇੱਕ ਮਹੱਤਵਪੂਰਨ ਹੈ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਮੈਸੇਜ ਆਇਆ ਸਰਦਾਰ ਖਜਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਸ਼ੋਰ ਸ਼ੋਰ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਜੋ ਸਮਾਂ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਉਹਦੇ ਲਈ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਫਿਰ ਚਾਹਾਂਗੇ ਅਗਲੇ ਫਿਰ ਕਿਸੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨਾਲ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਸਾਂਝ ਕਰੀਏ ਔਰ ਫਰਮਾਨ ਬੀ ਡਿਲਾਈਟ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਜੀ ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਓਕੇ ਜੀ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ